Welcome to this webinar hosted by Toradex entitled Secure Your Embedded Device with Proof and Run and Toradex. My name is David Zele. I work in business development for Toradex and today I'm joined by Dominique Bolignano, President and Founder of Proof and Run. Dominique will be presenting the webinar today and explain us how to improve the level of security of your connected devices. I want to thank everyone for coming and I also like to thank our technology partners for sharing this webinar. For those of you unfamiliar with Toradex, we specialize in embedded computing solutions, particularly ARM-based system modules or SOMs. Uh, the demonstration you'll see in this webinar will utilize Toradex NXP-based SOMs. We do have two families of SOMs within which the modules are pin compatible and interchangeable. We perform hardware and software development in-house and we generally guarantee a minimum 10-year product lifecycle support. We also offer complementary technical support from our developers and sales are handled directly by Toradex, so our products can be ordered right from our website. Finally, we have offices throughout the world, allowing us to really serve the needs of regional markets with local sales and technical support. So we can see that more and more Toradex customers implement connected devices such as for the Internet of Things and security is really one of the key issues for them. This is uh, where Proof and Run comes in as a very uh, meaningful partner for us and our customers. So employing Proof and Run's off-the-shelf software solutions on a Toradex module gives you a ready to use embedded system that is uh, protected against uh, remote cyber attacks. Dominic uh, will explain us the, the basic building blocks of this and demonstrate uh, such a secure solution on a Tardex IMX6 based model. So uh, without keeping you waiting any longer, I'll hand the presentation over to Dominic Bolignano of Proof and Run. Okay, hello, uh, good morning. I am the, the CEO and founder of uh, Proven Run, which is a company that I founded seven years ago. Uh, before that, I have had the same role in uh, various cyber security companies, one in uh, uh, smart card uh, ultra, ultra secure OSs, another one on uh, mobile security. So now the, the challenge with uh, Proven Run is to tackle the larger problem of uh, uh, cyber security of the Internet of Things and in particular it's most challenging part which is the resistance against remote cyber attacks. And we do this by providing some key off-the-shelf software uh, components that will dramatically improve the level of security. So we do this in partnership with our customers but we wanted to have a, um, a ready-to-use to set of solutions that uh, could be used uh, without in, uh, interaction with us uh, for, a broader, for a broader scope and uh, this is why we did this partnership with uh, Toradex and we are uh, providing a set of configuration that can be used to secure um, uh, most of the, of the IoT uh, architecture and addressing uh, the most important uh, security requirements. So even if it's, uh, it, might, it might appear not very useful to understand the problem uh, and uh, and how we, we solve it, I think it's worth having at least some uh, understanding. And this is why, uh, this is what I will try to do now. So we are, uh, the solution can be used and are used uh, already in many uh, IoT industrial um, uh, situations, but also uh, in, the, in the world of uh, consumer electronics. As you probably know there are uh, many uh, attacks that have been reported uh, lately. Uh, here are just a few of them. Uh, it's worth uh, having a look at them because uh, uh, they are quite representative and it, it's only the beginning I believe uh, and uh, such attack will be uh, more and more um, uh, dramatic in terms of, uh, of the problems they may cause. So uh, trying to, to explain the problem uh, even if you use, uh, which we recommend, uh, state-of-the-art methodology and state-of-the-art technology, there is still a problem um, which is in some, sense, in some sense new and uh, more uh, problematic in the IoT, 
uh, its uh, resistance uh, to logical attacks and uh, um, remote attacks. So uh, the problem comes from the fact that um, hackers uh, will exploit errors in the large sense that may be bugs, uh, configuration or specification errors, all these kinds of errors. And such errors, if, even if you do things correctly, uh, they will exist uh, in, in the OSs you use uh, because of their complexity and they are statistics like the one I mentioned, the NIST one, that shows that in all the, uh, your favorite OSs you have more than uh, thousands of uh, new bugs uh, reported every year and this is just for the public one, uh, not necessarily the one that the hackers use. So, uh, of course you want to use these OSs and uh, typically you will use uh, OSs like Linux and and um, they cannot be directly secured because of this. Uh, you can increase the security, but not uh, to the point that it's uh, enough uh, to resist to remote attacks. So um, there is a need for a sandboxing exam in a, in a way, which is what we are providing uh, uh, with our proven core, uh, which is uh, not only a secure OS, which would, which would not be sufficient, it is a formally proven kernel. That is, um, we have uh, formally proven using mathematical uh, proof, computer checked, uh, that the, the kernel and the OS uh, was resisting to, the, to some of the key security properties. So these formal, uh, formally proven kernels that uh, we suggest you put uh, next to your favorite OS to protect it uh, will uh, typically provide the entry, entry points. So for example, in the automotive, uh, industry, it may, be the, it may be the gateway, uh, telecommunication units and infotainment system. It should provide a secure execution environment so that to host security sensitive application and it should also control access to peripherals. So this is what we have done and we have, uh, we have put on the market two such uh, formally proven OSs, proven core for Cortex-A based uh, processors and proven core M uh, to come next uh, for a new uh, Cortex M uh, uh, architecture, in particular V8M. And we have formally proven this, uh, these uh, OSs uh, with a dedicated uh, proof tool. So our answer to the challenge is to, uh, to, tr to provide these, uh, these costs and in, in, um, in, the, in the solution I want to present it, uh, to pre-configure them in a set of configurations uh, ready to be used on uh, Toradex, Apalis and Colibri modules. In, uh, in, a, in a first step it will be on i.mx uh, NXP uh, uh, enabled um, uh, Apalis and Colibri boards. So they, we have brought together a, a set of few uh, security applications uh, that can be used to cover the main uh, use cases. So they can be seen as an out-of-the-box uh, security and of course uh, it doesn't prevent you from having to do some uh, standard administrative configuration and if possible understand the security uh, at stake to, uh, to do the proper, proper configuration. This is the least that, can be, that needs to be done. So uh, typically uh, our uh, product portfolio will look like this. You, you have on the left hand side uh, your uh, favorite uh, OS uh, together with these, these applications. So in this case the Linux and uh, we will uh, set next to, uh, to it uh, with proven core uh, having a set of, uh, of, uh, of security applications that will both protect the OS and protect it also against uh, the outside world. So the way we do it, uh, we use in fact uh, an area which is known as a secure, secure world on, uh, on, on ARM chips and uh, which allows us to, um, to be next to, to, to the normal world that you, that you use. And uh, this secure world uh, is similar to the normal world. It has, uh, it has a kernel mode, a user mode, so that we can um, use this part of the, of the world to put our uh, proven core uh, kernel and OS uh, together with its uh, security application and uh, these are the ones that will be used to uh, secure the, the normal world. So the first set of, uh, of um, 
of configuration we bring, we have a basic configuration which includes uh, a secure boot and a firmware update, and of course a secure firmware update. And uh, we will, uh, uh, I will try to explain uh, what is what is what is at stake for the secure boot and the, the firmware update, starting by the secure boot. So uh, of course uh, it is important that the chip itself uh, supports the secure boot. Uh, this is the case of the i.mx uh, NXP chips, uh, which are um, used uh, on Apalis and um, and other Toradex um, uh, modules. Uh, but there are many things to do to correctly use uh, this secure word, uh, sorry, the, this secure um, uh, boot. So first, uh, you have to to start the boot in the secure world. Uh, typically, you ha you will have a, a stepwise boot uh, in which in which one loader calls the next one and and verifies uh, the next one. Uh, and then also, of course, you will have to do many uh, security checking. Uh, and these are mandatory if you want to uh, um, to exploit uh, the secure boot hardware correctly and and have the correct uh, and secure uh, boot. Uh, of course, at the end, uh, it will load the actual uh, large OS in uh, in our case the Linux. And uh, this is already a first step, uh, which I would uh, suggest is mandatory uh, as a first line of defense. Uh, for securing the, the IoT. So, uh, mainly because uh, when you do the secure boot correctly, uh, the kind of attacks that, uh, that can be done is all much more complex. Uh, in particular, here I show that uh, uh, it will be much more cumbersome for the attacker to perform its attack. Um, so now we come to the firmware update because uh, just having a secure boot is uh, is for sure not enough. So firmware update uh, is now used. Uh, it depends on the on the market segment. Here I I, I take examples of the um, automotive industry where a secure uh, update uh, firmware update is uh, is uh, is considered now as uh, as required. So. Uh, I, I brought together two examples that show two recent examples that show that these uh, uh, firmware updates are very security sensitive and can be broken. Uh, and when they are broken, it's really a, a, a security problem. So uh, two examples that show that uh, even regardless whether the firmware update is over the air or not. So on the Tesla, for example, it is over the air. Uh, on the chip that was attacked, it was not over the air, uh, so that you had to do some recalls to do the update. Uh, the security problems uh, remain the same as uh, as soon as um, as these uh, devices uh, here, cars, are connected. So it's not a solution not to be uh, OTA. It will not solve the problem uh, as uh, for connected device. So uh, depending on the situation. You will have either one processor to update or uh, a bunch of them. So in the automotive industry, for example, you have many of them. Uh, so when you have only one, uh, what we recommend is that you put uh, our proven core uh, basic configuration uh, on these devices. Uh, if you have more than one, uh, this is what we are going to cover here. Uh, you might first want to put it on. Uh, the use ECU, that is uh, the processor, um, that will take a specific role uh, for uh, firmware updating. Uh, this, of course, is the first line of defense, but it's probably not enough. You also need to do some local verification on each of the, of the, of the uh, devices that need, need to be um, updated. And ideally, uh, you will have to put uh, you, will, you should put a proven core with its firmware update uh, agent on all the ECUs. So now I mentioned the, the fact that uh, firmware update could be um, it was very security sensitive and, and could be uh, attacked. Here are some kinds of uh, examples of what can be done. Uh, um, this first set shows uh, how integrity or authenticity, authenticity can be uh, uh, corrupted. You Availability also could be a problem. 
and uh, in some cases confidentiality uh, might be also a problem for you and you don't want uh, the firmware update to um, to be broken uh, to to, prov to let you provide uh, the source code uh, the binary code sorry to uh, to the hackers too easily so typically the the architecture is the following normally uh, if you don't uh, use our technology to secure uh, the firmware update you will have a um, a, a, a firmware update agent that we show uh, on the left hand side which is the client here uh, which will do all the preparation of the update uh, load the new uh, firmware prepare it check and everything and then pass it to um, what we call here the boot integration uh, agent uh, which is tightly uh, typically integrated with the, the, with the boot uh, sequence and in our case with a secure boot uh, and this is where the problem can uh, can come because uh, typically the hacker uh, will um, try to corrupt uh, first the part of the boot integration uh, that, is, that is executed on the normal side uh, by hacking the, the kernel, by hacking the, the, the boot integration itself. So what we recommend here is that uh, you put the, the, this boot integration uh, as part of the secure word and this is what we provide uh, in our integration with Proven Core. So in, in this case if uh, an hacker uh, uses uh, the OS bugs to try to, um, to do the attack or uh, the uh, uh, boot the, sorry the, the boot agent to, to do the attack uh, it will just not work. So this is the first uh, configuration we provide so we have uh, we have an integration of, uh, of a secure boot sequence uh, together with um, the, the firmware update integration and this just needs to be uh, uh, configured uh, before being used and typically what we provide also is a reference implementation of the firmware update in case in case you don't have your own one so that you can uh, you can uh, modify it or just compile it and run. So the next uh, step, uh, which is uh, of course even better and, and solve uh, additional security requirements, uh, is uh, having the same uh, uh, applications uh, and together with um, the isolation of the IP stack. And we will show why uh, this is needed. So assume you have an IoT embedded device uh, that you try to uh, secure. So even if you use, uh, as uh, displayed here, a VPN which is uh, uh, here uh, an open VPN based on uh, uh, TLS authentication and, uh, and of course running on TCIP, here um, we, we, the solution we provide is for uh, Ethernet communication. So even if the, all the packets uh, need to go through this op open VPN from the outside, even uh, so if they are encrypted, the hacker uh, will typically try by reverse engineering to try to uh, to understand uh, what are the, the problem errors on, on the software stack, in particular on the Ethernet driver, TCIP stack and others, and uh, will try to, um, to send packets that are supposed to be coming from the server uh, and uh, which will be encrypted um, but uh, which will have uh, some um, illegal um, uh, format so as to uh, uh, use uh, and um, use and, uh, and let's say and, and break the integrity of the of the part of the software that has been uh, uh, considered as being hacked uh, sorry uh, um, bugged and in, in this example uh, let's assume it's a driver so we will first uh, the hacker will first uh, break the um, uh, the integrity of the driver uh, and then uh, as a result break the integrity of the kernel especially in uh, most of the OS's like Linux uh, they have Ethernet drivers uh, and drivers in general which are part of the, of the kernel but even in, in, um, in micro kernel you might uh, do the same thing it's just more complex uh, and as a result you can break directly or indirectly all, the, all the, the, the software stack even if you have implemented the correct uh, VPN and TLS authentication. So in order to cope with this you may be tempted to use the separation that uh, OS's like Linux provide by uh, breaking the, the software stack and in particular the, 
the communication stack uh, so that each uh, part is uh, protected in, uh, in a process uh, that will be protected by the, for example, here the Linux separation. Uh, if you do this, the same problem can appear because, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the Ethernet uh, uh, driver, for example, here in our example, uh, is uh, part of the kernel, so it's uh, quite easy when you have broken the uh, driver um, to corrupt the, the kernel and, and the other part of the, of the software. So what we propose is to use uh, and to put our the, at least the TCIP and the Ethernet part uh, on top of the proven core, uh, which has been formally proven uh, in particular to address uh, integrity, to resist uh, to a lack of integrity of any application. So any application that is corrupted cannot corrupt the, the kernel. Uh, and it cannot also uh, corrupt or uh, talk to the other uh, uh, applications uh, if not allowed. So the corruption cannot be uh, uh, propagated to the other part of the, of the software. In addition, of course, uh, what we provide in our um, uh, configuration is a more uh, secure version of Ethernet. So this is uh, typically the, the, the two, two, new, two new applications we add in this extended configuration, the Ethernet driver and the TCIP stack. And of course, we keep the Linux TCIP and Ethernet driver if needed. And it's just a matter of configuration as we will see. So uh, our second uh, configuration looks uh, like this. So you have, instead of having just the secure boot and the uh, firmware update, the secure firmware update, we add to this also the TCIP stack and the Ethernet driver. And this is the uh, application which is ready to go, at least modulo uh, configuration. So as before, we provide a reference implementation of a firmware update uh, agent in case you don't have your uh, favorite one. So uh, now we will go to the demo. Of course, on, uh, with security, the demo are not very uh, flashy. Uh, so what, we will tr what I will try to, um, to show is the following. So we use the main configuration. Uh, and we will uh, try to show that by configuring it uh, first uh, in a way that only uh, the, sorry, the Ethernet peripheral is only accessible from the secure world. Uh, we, we, we get a configuration where the secure world uh, is, uh, is the place which sees and, and where all the communication uh, goes through. So that uh, the, the attack I, I, I was uh, mentioning before uh, cannot be performed. This means that if you try to load the Ethernet driver on Linux, it will just not work. In, in, in fact, because uh, if you don't modify this Ethernet driver, uh, it will just crash because uh, uh, the hardware peripheral uh, will not be visible. So uh, this is what is displayed uh, here on the picture. So now uh, we will uh, start by the first part of the, of the demo. Uh, we do the loading. So the loading uh, is, um, is as usual. The, the only thing is that here uh, in the first part, in the first part, uh, you have the you have the loading of the secure boot here, and then this is uh, followed by um, by the, the the starting of and the loading of Linux as usual, uh, which of course will take most more time. So uh, at this point, nothing is changed. We have just uh, set up the configuration. But for the user, uh, it's the same besides a few lines of uh, code that shows that uh, Proven Core is uh, up and running. So now, uh, in, uh, in the second step, uh, I, I have a configuration where there is no Ethernet uh, connectivity. And remember, the secure world is controlling everything. So the secure world uh, will um, uh, not allow any communication either to the secure world or to the normal world. So this is what we show here. So first, uh, trying to go out from, uh, from the Linux uh, uh, world. So here, we are trying to, um, to make a connection and then ping uh, the outside world. It will not work. Uh, it might be due, due to bandwidth, uh, not very easy to uh, to see on your side, uh, but of course, uh, video will be available uh, uh, after um, 
on the Toradex site and uh, you can go back to it and, 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 and look at it more uh, uh, in detail. So now we will show that the incoming communication cannot go through either. Uh, and uh, this is here where it goes. So we have uh, we are trying to make a ping from the outside world, which is represented by the screen on the right hand side, and uh, of course it will not um, work. So now, okay, we will go. Uh, to the next step, which is uh, which correspond in configuring in configuring the Ethernet driver in Proven Core, so that at least Proven Core can talk to the outside world. So uh, this is what we do now, and it will allow communication uh, between the external world and uh, the secure world, but still not uh, with um, with the Linux protected world. So this is what's happening here. We are uh, starting the secure, not, uh, secure network stack. So we are just um, uh, making the configuration, loading the driver. So now we are ready. And um, OK, so OK, so I continue. And we see that the communication um, so this is the loading of the of the kernel. Sorry, I, I, I did twice the same thing. And now we are um, we are pinging from uh, outside world, and we see that uh, this is coming and uh, uh, correctly answering. So now uh, we will show that uh, uh, the secure world completely controls the the communication by trying to load the Ethernet driver uh, and configure it on the on the Linux side, and this is um, of course it will not be allowed, and this is uh, what we are showing. And at the same time, no matter what happens on the on the Linux side, even if it crashes, uh, the uh, proven core will still be active and can be uh, and can be uh, used to to communicate. So this is what we show here. So on the Linux side, we are trying to load the kernel, so it crashes, and um, and now we'll see the resulting situation. We still have uh, the trust zone that is the secure part and the proven core running, so that in theory it's not what we provide in the first configuration you could also uh, do some uh, internet remote maintenance and this is a uh, next level of, uh, of application we will put soon uh, available in our uh, uh, extended configuration. Okay, so as a conclusion, um, uh, I've tried to show uh, the security issues at stake and the fact that um, with uh, using uh, one of our two uh, configuration ready to go, uh, of course, configuring it, configuring them uh, as you would for any um, uh, OS, uh, you can have a very secure situation. Uh, and um, and of course, in more sophisticated cases uh, where you would have some additional security requirements, we still offer some. Uh, additional security services to help you uh, have a more tailored, tailored offering. But in many cases, um, at least in most cases, uh, these two configurations plus uh, the next one we will uh, release soon uh, should uh, be sufficient to cover most of your needs in terms of security. So since this is um, for the presentation and uh, if you have any questions, I would be pleased to answer. Well, there, uh, there is one question uh, which uh, asked me about uh, formal proof. So, uh, on a complex system like a kernel, uh, testing uh, by itself is not enough, and this is why um, we have on uh, very well developed uh, uh, OSs like Linux, uh, Mac OS, and many others, according to statistics, thousands of new bugs coming every year, being reported every year. So. Testing is just not enough. So 
uh, in fact, it is not enough because you cannot uh, go through all the potential possible configuration, uh, which is uh, much too uh, numerous. So the only solution to this problem is to use mathematical proof to demonstrate uh, either that the system is correct or uh, that uh, the, um, it meets uh, the security uh, policy or uh, properties that you will have uh, expressed. So when you prove, you have to prove that for all possible configuration and all possible uh, input, uh, the correctness or the uh, satisfaction of property is met. So this is why it's uh, it's a very uh, demanding um, activity which takes a lot of time, especially if you want to uh, address uh, most the most sophisticated uh, security properties. It cannot be automa automatized. Uh, it needs a lot of effort. We have done it once for all. This is why the company is uh, seven years old. For the five first years, uh, we did prove the, the kernel we put on the market uh, without trying to sell them. Now we have been selling them and shipping them for the past two years. So it's a very, let's say, uh, time-consuming and effort-consuming activity to prove formally a software, especially a kernel. Uh, but once you have done it, uh, it is done once for all, and um, all our partners and clients can use it. And we, this is why we want to address a very large market, which is the IoT, so that the cost for everyone is very small even if the, if the investment is huge. So uh, what is uh, the other questions is uh, about the budget. So what is the budget like? So in this offer, what we propose, uh, uh, as long as you use our uh, ready-to-go um, uh, configuration, that is, there is no need for, uh, for us to tune it or to uh, configure it for, your, for, your, for yourself, um, we ask uh, for the basic configuration, it's uh, 40 cents uh, per unit. So it's a royalty-based, um, uh, let's say, uh, um, it's a royalty-based um, uh, model. But uh, for obvious reason, you need to register on our site. And there is, uh, uh, you can only buy uh, a bunch of, uh, of royalties. So uh, typically, you can. Uh, uh, you have to register. Uh, there is um, a five hundred um, dollars for registration, and then uh, when the product is ready for shipping, uh, there is four uh, an additional four thousand uh, five hundred, uh, which together so together five thousand uh, uh, dollars uh, is uh, transformed into royalties that you can use. And when you want the next uh, uh, bunch of uh, royalties, you just need to, to do the same process. OK, so uh, I have an additional question of, um, uh, about formal proof. So apparently, I was not uh, precise enough. Um, so what we have done in terms of formal proof on our uh, uh, kernel, we have identified uh, the trusted computing base, that is, the kernel plus part of the OS, the trusted computing base being the part of the OS, uh, of the software in general, that needs to be uh, formally secured for the system to be secured. Uh, and uh, we have formally proven it from the abstract uh, uh, security properties down to the code. And by the way, I didn't mention it, but this is a world premiere. Uh, doing going on a real OS down to the code and in a way that is maintainable uh, had, had never been achieved. So this is why we are in the process of uh, doing a, a common criteria evaluation, uh, security evaluation uh, at the highest level reach, which is EL7+, plus. the plus being for the extension being for the fact that the formal proof is down to the code. Okay. As uh, there is another question uh, on the footprint, so uh, on the version we, uh, the package uh, version uh, that we provide on uh, Toradex, Apalis, and Colibri, uh, we don't try to to be as, as small as possible because we we want to cover uh, as much as possible of uh, of cases. So 
um, the proven core uh, plus its application uh, is a few hundred K uh, ROM and, and uh, the data and um, and memory of course and this is uh, uh, of course this is much uh, smaller than uh, than the Linux uh, uh, footprint uh, on Cortex M we can be as low as uh, uh, 23 or 24 K uh, but of course uh, it needs some tuning and it can be non it cannot be made av available as a standalone um, uh, ready to go uh, solution okay then there is another question about uh, the source code so uh, we are not uh, on the secure side we are not delivering the, the source code uh, but we are we are still doing security uh, uh, not by obscurity we are providing all the source code to the security evaluation lab that uh, have the complete uh, source code the complete explanation of why it works the complete proof proof of uh, proof that is performed well, i hope it's it answers the question i have one about um, all the any white papers uh, which get into the details so on formal proof yes um, on what we did um, uh, we have some uh, small documentation on the formal proof uh, yes there are a lot of papers they are usually uh, three kinds of uh, formal proof were, which are um, identified um, some are automatic but of course they don't prove the security properties we are uh, talking about uh, these are static um, static analysis and model checking uh, of course they are useful but just to show the absence of uh, low level uh, problems what we are doing is a third uh, kind of um, a formal proof which is uh, so the so called dedut deductic deductive um, uh, formal proof uh, where we can in theory prove anything but uh, we cannot do it automatically so some part is automated but there is a lot of work which is done uh, for uh, uh, giving hints to the formal prover. Yes, the Linux uh, distribution, there is a question about the Linux distribution. Uh, as our uh, um, ready to go um, package, uh, uh, we use the Linux um, offering that is provided by Toradex, um, but the solution uh, can be adapted easily and we, and we provide uh, the source code for the patches of course on the Linux side, that is on, on the normal side uh, we provide all the source code so that if you want to port to another Linux which is not supported by Toradex you can do it on the Toradex board uh, and, and by looking at our um, uh, patches, the source, source code patches and adapt them. The impact um, on boot time, there is a question of, of, of the impact of boot time um, I couldn't give uh, real uh, precise figures but it's um, uh, I would say it's more in the range of uh, one out of um, 100 for the, if 100 is uh, Linux time for booting, uh, it's, it's likely to be something like one. So it's really a marginal as compared to the, to the Linux booting. Okay, so then there is a question about uh, what are the formal criteria used to verify it. So uh, we formally proved, um, so one thing we wanted to do is that the security properties um, we prove uh, are uh, as simple as possible to express because if you formally prove a formal properties uh, which has a problem in it uh, it's not uh, bringing uh, a lot of really assurance so we have um, um, at least one paper on it uh, that uh, can be found on our website uh, where we describe exactly what we do uh, in terms of uh, formal proof and in particular um, the kind of uh, properties that are uh, expressed and proved. So uh, now I have a question about uh, how to implement um, um, the high assurance boot uh, on the i.mx6 module. Uh, this is something we do uh, so uh, if you don't use our technology of course you have to go through, through the uh, NXP uh, um, uh, security documentation which I think you should uh, ask 
through NDA uh, to NXP and do the work by yourself. And we are providing this uh, as part of, uh, of our two configuration, uh, ready, to, ready to go. Then uh, there is a question on uh, whether we support uh, QNX, QNX, QNX uh, 6.6 or 7.0. Uh, yes, we are doing, but uh, it's not something uh, which is uh, available as a ready-to-go um, um, out-of-the-box uh, thing as, uh, as what was described here on Apalis and Colibri. So uh, uh, we provide this, uh, but it needs uh, a direct discussion with us. Uh, then there is a question um, about the repository. I don't understand. Yes, you, you can... Um, there is a question about the Linux repo repository update. Uh, in fact, this is the part I demonstrated. Um, I try to go back um, to this uh, transparent. Here on the left-hand side, uh, you have um, the firmware update preparation agent, which I said is provided uh, as a reference implementation. That is source code reference implementation. But of course, uh, you can adapt. Uh, we are using uh, U-boot, and uh, you can adapt the U-boot or, or the Linux uh, update system in the way you, d you want. Uh, and uh, so that uh, our uh, SF, uh, secure firmware update boot integration uh, is the uh, first steps uh, towards uh, your own um, your own firmware update. And of course, we will uh, check that uh, uh, your um, your uh, security update is uh, is the correct one, is the one you want. So we cannot uh, check that you do the uh, the firmware update correctly on your side if you change our. Uh, uh, firmware update preparation uh, agent, but we can guarantee that uh, uh, it will be uh, signed uh, um, according to your uh, own um, um, signing uh, rules. Yeah. And in the documentation, you can use also, this is not a question, but you can use also your own, uh, of course, um, signing um, uh, tools. Uh, we have a documentation that goes along uh, the offer where we explain what to do with the standard uh, root of trust uh, architecture so you can adapt uh, your, your favorite one and, um, and do this on your, on your own if you want. Okay, this seems to be the end of the questions here. Thank you very much, Dominic. Uh, I would also like to thank everyone who joined us today. A uh, big thanks to Dominic and Proof and Run for giving us this uh, interesting presentation and answering all the questions. The webinar recording will be available in a few days on our website. Also check out our Toradex webpage for future webinars. Of course, let us know uh, any feedback. If you're interested in the topics we discussed today, please get in touch with us and Proof and Run so we can discuss your requirements. Uh, thanks again and hope to see you at one of our next webinars. Thanks to all of you.